Six Nations homegrown and imported talent. We are going to go through the Six Nations squads for 2024 and look at the kind of compositions of these squads. You guys can let us know your thoughts. If you are dying to just get straight into some numbers, look at some names, see where they were born, where they learned their trade and what other teams they may be represented under 20s level, model your bikes level and whatnot. Please, I invite you to check out America's Rugby News. This is where the source data for this video comes from. Written by Paul Tate. It's a great wee example. Great bit of research of um, you know all this data uh, for all these different players. He also did it for the World Cup. He's done it for previous Six Nations. So if you want to look at like New Zealand's composition, the Wallabies composition, it's all there. Talked to Paul Tate in an interview with him uh, just prior to the World Cup. So I invite you to check that out and the previous kind of playlist with these uh, kinds of videos before I find them pretty fascinating it does get to be a bit of a gray area with the UK just because people can move around the UK maybe more so than we see with a lot of other places I mean Australia and New Zealand have got the same thing where you can kind of move freely for work so the UK does get to be a bit more of a gray area than some countries like a lot of people tell me you know if you live in Wales often your closest hospital is in England so I'm not really that fussed where the people are born the people are born is kind of an interesting but i'm more interested in where did the guys learn their trade and it kind of speaks to how well or not um the local talent is being cultivated and produced but anyway we'll go through the teams as i said check out the source article and you guys can let us know your thoughts we're going to start with wales because they are towards the bottom end of the guys who were not locally produced they are largely a welsh both born and raised squad 30 of the 34 guys are welsh born and 31 of the 34 guys are Welsh produced. So Nick Tompkins, Will Rollins, and Archie Griffin all learned their trade in England. The other 31 guys all learned their rugby at home in Wales. And the guys who did learn abroad uh, have got blood connections with Wales, either through a parent or a grandparent. So Wales are a pretty straightforward one to get through. France are a little bit different, and they've got a few guys there on residency. So just that little kind of extra bit of complication, I suppose. Uh, you got guys born in England, New Zealand, Samoa, and South Africa. So 34 of the 34, 6, 7, 8, 9 guys are, um, are French-born. So the vast majority of the squad still. But even more of them are locally produced. Like guys like Tuilangi, the new the new and the long line of Tuilangis, might have been born in Samoa, but he is a locally produced player. Emilian Gaetan may have been born in England, but he's a locally produced player. You're just looking at Miafu, Willemsa, and Antonio. Willemsa was a late addition to the squad. Um, yeah, only those three guys have kind of learned their trade abroad. So a Kiwi, uh, a Namibian, and an Australian. Yeah. Uh, pretty straightforward with France is the only difference being you've got a few residency qualified guys there uh, in the mix too England likewise pretty straightforward man you got five guys born abroad and two of them who learned their trade abroad so guys like Marcus Smith might have been born abroad born abroad likewise Sam Underhill but they moved back to England very young so um, you know are still locally homegrown players you've got Ethan Roots who did learn his trade here in NZ, played a bit of NPC for North Harbour, Māori All Black, so certainly a very strong New Zealand connection for him, and Manny Fee Waboso, uh, Welsh connection for him, but uh, both qualified to play for England, and are thus doing so, so 37 of the 39 guys in the English squad are homegrown, which is yeah, pretty straightforward story too. Ireland have got a kind of mix of guys born abroad to Irish parents, and uh imported for rugby purposes i guess players um like the likes of frawley and lockman and mccarthy born abroad irish rugby's got a huge little like ronan o'gara is always the famous example of guys born abroad but no one's ever going to say they're not homegrown because they did learn their trade in ireland that's the same with the likes of frawley and mccarthy and lockman you do have a few guys who learned their trade abroad though that's the likes of Finlay Bielham, who still has a blood connection with Ireland. Uh, there's no Mac Hansen this year, so he's not on this list. But then James Gibson Park, Bundy Yaki, and James Lowe. Uh, those are your three kind of residency qualified guys. Sometimes Irish fans ask, how do I feel about those guys playing for Ireland? Because I'm a Kiwi. Those guys are Kiwis. All of those guys raised their games to another level playing in Ireland. So personally, I have no problem with them. Uh, playing for Ireland because like James and Gibson Park was not the player he was when he left. Likewise, James Lowe, likewise Bundyaki. So they have, for mine, a genuine connection uh, to the country and it's great, great to see them doing well. Uh, Italy has got 
Um, still mostly guys with a blood connection to Italy. There's only one guy who's residency qualified from uh, from the Italian squad, and that's Monte Ioane. He's an Aussie. Uh, played enough time in Italy to you know to qualify to play. But you've got guys like um, Negri, who was born in Zimbabwe. Uh, learned his trade in South Africa. You've got uh, Vincent, who I think has got a connection with the UAE of all places, but also played kind of under 20s rugby, under 18s rugby for, for the Italians. So he's had a strong connection to their system. Varney's got the Welsh connection. Pedrello and Capuzzo got the French connection. But as I said, the vast majority of the Italian squad is uh, Italian born and raised, 29 of them. Uh, and then you've got guys qualifying through parents, grandparents, and uh, the one guy in residency, like I mentioned. And then you've got the Scottish squad. The Scottish squad is genuinely the outlier in how many of the guys qualify from outside Scotland. It maybe speaks to a little bit of a lack in the kind of age group rugby in Scotland at the moment. Their under-20 side hasn't been good for a wee while. So that's, if I was in charge of Scottish rugby, certainly one thing I would l be looking to address. But there's a heap of guys in the squad, despite the fact that they are born outside Scotland, who have very, very strong blood ties uh, with Scotland. Cam Redpath is always the one that gets brought up because he's born in France, uh, raised in England, but he's literally got a dad who played for Scotland, so you'd be pretty hard-pressed to say he's not a Scot. But I mean, of the guys who trained abroad, you got Ben Healy in Ireland, Javin Sebastian, who's another one of these kind of late additions, and Paul, I think, has done a pretty good job at updating all these rosters as the... Injuries have come in and out. Obviously, um, there'll be more, so this list will go out of date at some point, at least this video. But Javin Sebastian, Wales, Dempsey and Tupolotu, Australia. Uh, the South African guys in Van der Merwe, Stain, Schoolman and Nell, but Stain's got a, a Scottish parent. So um, those three guys, apart from Stain, are three of you kind of residency qualified guys. Uh, Alec Hepburn's played for England. Uh, and then there's a bunch of guys who were born or raised in England. Ben White, Ali Price, the, the list is very long. Uh, the Scottish connection with England, as I said, is, uh, is pretty lengthy. But when you're looking at the guys qualified um, who weren't necessarily born in Scotland, 11's through a parent, 7's through a grandparent, only 4 through residency. So it doesn't seem like the Scots are just kind of going around the world picking up guys who haven't yet been capped by other countries with an eye on capping them for Scotland. There are a few uh, but, you know, kind of not drastically more than any of the other squads. Like Ireland's got three residency guys. France has got four residency guys. Italy's got four residency guys. So, um, yeah, it's only Wales and England that don't have guys on residency based on what I can see here. So, yes, it certainly is a kind of interesting mix with these Six Nations squads. Make of it what you will. Now, speaking of foreign, if you want to see this fella in a foreign country, speaking a foreign language, I was in China last year. And took my camera around. I went and get a, got a haircut from Baba. And he told me about the time when he moved out of his house at 15 years old. Dropped out of school and went to a province next to like Myanmar and Vietnam. And then there was heaps of drugs going on there. Dude had a pretty interesting story. I'll put that up there. That's Two Cents on Tour. That's my other channel. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on this. Can be kind of a hot button issue. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Later.